Whew. I'm gonna do it again. Not anytime soon, I need some time to forget how much work this is. I don't know, I've seen some professionals do excellent work and I've seen some quote professionals do pretty crummy work with their welding and their prepping and their painting and cutting corners and anyway. So doing it myself gives me some satisfaction that I'm confident in it's going to stay up and that the holes are the right depth and that I prep the metal and um, there's enough weld on to hold the steel together and all that. So, but it is a lot of work. But just got the paint on. This is uh, Sherwin-Williams acrylic water-based, uh, I don't know, direct to metal is what I got. I prepped the metal with phosphoric acid and, well, the Oswo brand of phosphoric acid, OSPHO if you haven't heard of it, and it basically um, neutralizes rust and it does something to the surface of the metal. So some people don't prime their metal and I don't when I use this. I spray it on, um, it builds up this white chalky stuff as it neutralizes the rust and um, you just scrape that off with a Brillo, I mean a Brillo pad, a scotch Bright pad. And um, then I pressure washed it. So I spent about two hours this morning um, getting all the white uh, dust off, um, the neutralized rust all the way around. <clears throat> And I'd sprayed all the welds, and I'd sprayed all the I-beams here, which were bare metal. The sea purlins are, um, of course, coated in that red oxide stuff. So I didn't use phosphoric acid on those, but I did spray all my welds, um, all my, um, all the bare metal. Anyway, um, got it all sanded off. Took about two hours this morning to get all the way around, and uh, then I pressure washed the whole thing to get all the dust off. Um, it, of course, it was about 80 degrees today, so that was good. A little bit of breeze helped it to dry pretty quick, so there was no rust. Um, the channels held some of the water, so I went around with the chamois and just wiped them out, made sure all the water got out, um, let it dry for another hour or so. Then I used this Krause and Becker, this Harbor Freight um, airless sprayer, 169 bucks or something on sale, and uh, I've never used one before, so this has been kind of an adventure. Um, I had two gallons, and I don't know what I was thinking, two gallons. Two gallons probably would have done the ends here, but I decided to go ahead and make the sea purlins match. So my plan was to put two coats on the I-beams, which were bare metal, and then the one coat on the sea purlins, which were already coated in the primer. So <clears throat> the two gallons went pretty quick. I sprayed the whole thing in about 30 minutes, and that was with moving my ladder. And so I got one coat on... Uh, the bare steel here and one coat on the bare steel on the other end and so I went ran down to Sherwin Williams got five more gallons so I ended up spraying five gallons total I've got about two gallons left in the five gallon bucket and um, it went super quick I mean those last three four gallons that I sprayed um, with that airless sprayer took about two hours two and a half hours and half that time at least half that time was moving my ladder and moving my scaffolding and trying to get in position and um, so <clears throat> the spraying went really quick. I'm so glad I bought that thing. That thing was so worth it. Clean up. Um, I cleaned it up twice a day. The first time after the two gallons that I sprayed and it took me about 25 or 30 minutes to clean it up. The second time I cleaned it up after I finished um, took me about 10 minutes. So it was just kind of a learning curve of what I needed to do and what was considered clean and what I needed to watch out for, blah, blah, blah. Okay, there's plenty of videos on that, so I'm not going to go into those details. But, dude, that thing was, that thing is awesome. I made it so worth it. Um, this color. And it dried super quick. It was like 10 minutes and you could touch it. I forgot what this color is called. Anyway, it's basically the same color we trimmed the house with. And it's also the same color we sprayed the um, add-on porch with. So, see the MIG welding there. Actually, this is probably arc welding right here. Use the arc welder on some of these. And uh, beads look all right. They're not great, but they're not bad either. They're going to do a good job holding. So, last piece is I ran out of sea purlin. I miscalculated, so I've got to get another 20-footer. Um, I'll have to cut it down to fit this. I'll have to grind this off and then weld it on and then uh, get it uh, painted. I'll just paint that one by hand because it's just a little piece. 
Oh, what else? Paint. So next is metal. We've got to decide what color. We're going to match the roof here. We've got this copper kind of um, metal here. I'm going to use the 26 gauge. It's a little bit heavier. And um, I'll probably use it on the sides as well. I'm going to have to see if I need any vertical support here in the middle. Um, if it's going to wobble or not when the wind blows. We'll have to see. But I think once I get the metal screwed on, it should be pretty tight. Now, the, as far as the front goes, I'm still not sure what I'm going to do. I thought about um, building a track that went off to the side um, from the bottom. Well, actually, just a hanging door that would hang from right here that I could slide from over here and cover up the front here and then just slide it. Uh, it's going to take up a lot of space sticking out the side there. Though it's uh, a little, about 10 feet to cover, a little less than 10 feet. So I might just weld up some square tubing half doors and they'll be pretty big but uh, I can weld on the hinges and then put them in place and then just put some metal over them. That's probably what I'll end up doing um, just to give the tractor some extra protection in the winter so snow doesn't build up inside and <clears throat> and then I can lock it too I guess. So overall I'm pretty happy. Uh, my stick welding here turned out to be not stellar. It was just really hard to keep an arc um, without burning through. So, and I just don't have the experience with thin metal because um, this is 14 gauge. These C-prones are 14 gauge and this is 316ths of course. And um, so I just switched to the MIG welder and of course that just made it super easy and uh, the welds went right in. So. Okay, good. Well, and then the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the plasma cutter. I think I'm going to chop these ends off where they're flush. I should have done that. Um, I thought, well, it'll give me a little bit of an overhang support, but there's nothing really going to be supporting the metal in the middle. And the other thing is it's going to be hard to close in these holes without it looking like junk. So I'm going to go ahead and just chop them off, and that way the metal is all flush all the way up to the edge there, and then we'll just make a little bit of an overhang off the roof, maybe a couple inches all the way around. So one last thing to do is to chop those off. Okay, good. But so far so good. I'm happy. And uh, it's been a lot of work, but it'll be worth it when I'm done.